repair channel. So today we're going to be talking about how to remove charge offs that you have settled the account. But I get a lot of emails, I get messages that say, hey, Larry, can you do a video on this? And I said, I got you. So we're going to do a video because I want to give you the truth, right? This channel is all about keeping it real with you about credit and the things you need to do to improve your credit. So, uh, but before we get into all of that, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, definitely, uh, I'm getting everything set up. I've got a new setup, uh, got some new stuff going on, got some new things I'm going to be adding to the channel. I'm really excited about it. Uh, so please continue to follow me. We're going to be start getting into some investing uh, and uh, really kind of guide people in the start seeing what can I do to grow my wealth uh, along, along with credit. So just a little bit, I get a lot of people that are frustrated. They've been working on their credit for two years and their credit score is still in the 630s, 640s. And they're like, I've been working on this stuff for so long. And there's so much misinformation out there because people uh, are not really giving y'all the right information to be able to move your credit forward a lot quicker. So people struggle with trying to get their credit right, and it's just so much misinformation. So uh, I'm going to bring it to you uh, uh, on things you need to do uh, to help you get your credit score up. Charge-offs is the one thing that people struggle with the most. They're not sure. How do I deal with these charge-offs? So as if you've been following my videos, charge-offs are the most damaging thing on your credit report besides a bankruptcy. And even with a bankruptcy, if you really attack and start building your credit from that point, you can build it a lot faster. It just shows that negative indicator. If it's a seven, if it's a chapter seven, it's going to be 10 years. If it's a chapter 13, it can report up to uh, seven years, right? But at least you didn't clear that negative stuff off. You're moving forward. A lot of people with charge-offs allow their charge-offs to maintain unpaid, unfixed on their credit report for two and three, four and five years, right? It is damaging because they report on that charge-off every single month. So if you stop paying on a credit card or you had a car loan and they repossessed it or you let that charge-off default and we'll go back to 2018, it's four years old. So for four years, they've been reporting on that charge off that is unpaid. And people are struggling with trying to get new credit, right? You got to remember, the creditor is going to be looking at that credit report. And why would a creditor give you $5,000, $10,000, or give you a loan if you allow a charge off, an unpaid charge off? It is a risk. It, it shows you as a risk. That's what bars look at. Are you a risk? Or are you not a risk? It really falls down to those two things. And if I give you this money, what is my chances of getting it back? Just got to make it simple, right? And that's what creditors look at. So when you allow the negative stuff, this unpaid negative stuff, to stay on your credit report for four and five years, you're doing yourself a disservice. The amount of money that you've lost, not losing, but you have lost because you allowed that to hang around on your credit report is massive. Because now you're trying to establish credit. And then you also, if you do get credit, you get at such a high interest rate. And now if you're using that credit and carrying a balance, you're really you're really just sucking into your financial future. It's that simple. All right, I'm going to make it simple for you. Right? A lot of people are going to BS you, tell you a bunch, tell you the stuff that you want to hear. But when you go back and look, man, my credit score has not improved in the last four years. And you got these charge-offs steady reporting. Some people have three and four charge-offs reporting every single month for three or four years and not understanding it is killing it is killing your finance killing your ability to improve on your credit 
right? So I need to make sure I get you to understand. Some people have charge-offs for like $500, right? And then they allow because they're like, oh, it's reporting inaccurate. Yes, it may be reporting inaccurate, right? But let's keep it real. Now, the creditor don't really care if it's reporting inaccurate. Let's keep it real. They don't care because they have all the information to prove that you owe this debt. It's not like it's going to a collection company. So what are you gonna take the original creditor to court, right? Because if you take them to court, they got you in the courtroom. They'd say it is and you prove that they're reporting it inaccurate. It doesn't mean that that whole debt is gonna be wiped away. You still owe the debt and now you in the courtroom. And let's just say, you get it removed off your credit report. If you're still in the statute of limitation, they can still sue you. So think about that depending on the state you're in, right? So the leverage, depending on the leverage, is on their side. Now, I always tell people you have a better chance. If you're trying to move your credit report faster, you're trying to move it. If it is reporting that inaccurate, you have a better chance of getting it removed if you don't owe them anything. I'm not saying go out and pay the whole amount. Try to come up with a settlement. One, because they don't get to report it anymore. It's done. They can't go on that credit report. And if they do, they're in violation. That's a way that you can get it removed. And we're going to talk about all the ways and what to look at, right? But... At least they don't they don't have a reason to hold it like that. You have a better chance of getting it removed. But the creditor is gonna be like, I don't care if I'm reporting it accurate. They owe me five thousand dollars. Take me to court. Sue me under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Now this channel is gonna keep it real with you. But if you're doing the right things, you can move. A creditor wants to know: have you changed the behavior? Has the behavior changed? It doesn't mean they don't want to give you the money. They just want to know, is do I have a better chance of getting my money? And the only way that you can do that is to show on your credit report that the behavior has changed. You fell on hard times, but you're back on track, and you can trust me that I'm going to take care and pay it back. It's just that simple. Now, you can listen to a bunch of people try to feed you a bunch of stuff, try to give you gimmicks, tricks, and all that, and four years later, you still got a 630, a 620, and you're still struggling and can't get the high-limit credit cards or the credit that you want. So you ain't got to listen to me. Been there, done that, but this channel is going to keep it real with you because sometimes people need the hard truth. You don't need nobody that's going to tell you what you want to hear. You want somebody that's going to tell you the truth. That's what this channel is about. I'm going to tell you the truth, right? I'm going to tell you your strategies. I'm going to tell you the possibilities. I talk to people all the time. I have more people call me and say, you know, you're one of the few guys. I've reached out quite a few people here on YouTube. They haven't returned my call. They don't this. They don't that. I appreciate you taking the time and talking to me because I'm going to keep it real with you, right? So I am telling you, I know some people say, man, just get to the point. But people need to hear the truth before I get to this. They need to understand that you're holding yourself back. Now, listen, charge-offs, most hardest thing to remove. It's the truth. Nothing hard about that. It's probably the most watched videos on YouTube. How do I remove a charge-off? But you need to hear the truth. Yes, you can get it removed. It's definitely... Very difficult when you owe a creditor five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars. They can care less if it's reported inaccurate. They really can. You can sue them for the one thousand dollars. If you find, I mean, you owe them ten, you're still gonna owe them some money. It ain't gonna wipe the debt. And if it's within the statute of limitations, and you're gonna go in the courtroom and sue them, they still have grounds to sue you under the statute of limitation laws, whatever state you in. So let's, you're not going to let it ride. Don't let it ride on your credit report for seven years. Sometime again on this channel, you're going to take a nail. They took a nail. Sometimes you go take one too. You're going to win some battles and you're going to lose. Accept the losses so you can win later. Don't continue to lose and then it's steady holding you back from you growing your wealth.
It's just that simple, right? So charge-offs, we're going to get into that. I ran it for a little bit, but you needed to hear the truth about it. So how do you remove a charge-off? What is the thing about a charge-off? Wrote my notes down so I don't miss anything. You know, the first thing you need to understand with a charge-off is you need to pull a full credit report. Quit going to these people that give you a two-year payment history on a charge-off. And why are you paying for it? You can go to annualcreditreport.com and get a full credit report from the big three. And what's so powerful about that credit report is they certify that credit report to be accurate. So if you did have to take them to court, you pulled their official credit report. So if you got a credit report from Identity IQ, Credit Strong, or whoever these other people is that don't give you a full credit report, meaning seven years, a full credit report, then how do you know that the, there are missing information on the years that you don't even have available to you? If you opened up account in 2018, right, it is 2022. So if you only get two years of payment history, they only took you back to 2020. How do you know in 2018 and 19, there's missing information in there? It's inaccurate information. That's where a lot of people make a mistake. Go get a full, whatever, whoever's going to give you a credit report, you tell them, I want a full credit report. That is what the creditors get when they pull your credit report. They don't pull partials, right? Now, if it's a soft pool, yes, that is a partial credit report. But when you apply, when you apply, they get a full credit report. That's why if you go to annualcreditreport.com and some of y'all got mute, um, a mature credit report, it's 70, 60, 80 pages. That's why so many pages, it's a full credit report. That's the first thing you need to do pull a full credit report so you can get a complete evaluation analysis on your credit report so you can make the right decisions and know what is actually being reported inaccurate. First thing you need to do, quit getting these partial. If you look at your credit report and it don't have seven years of payment history, you got a partial credit report. Go get a full one. That's the first thing you need to do, right? And then go to annualcreditreport.com. No, I'm not affiliated with them. I don't get anything from them, but it's where you need to go. And it's free. Why y'all paying people for something that the government is giving you for free that is an official site for the big three? So I don't know, uh, but maybe I should keep that with y'all. But y'all do what y'all got to do. Uh, now, again, usually in... The attack on your charge-offs is really a lot of that information, that inaccurate information is in the seven-year payment history. There is going to be missing information, months they didn't report, months they didn't even report that there was a past due balance that month, but they reported that it was 30 days late. That's why you need a full credit report. All that stuff is in there. In that month, they were past due how much was they passed due that month and what was the balance that month? That is a full credit report. All that information is in there. And if you go to annualcreditreport.com, you will see that. But if you still want to get those credit reports from those little bitty people that's going to charge you at the same time, go ahead, keep doing it. That's why a lot of y'all struggle with getting the accurate information, right? So, I look at people's seven-year credit, and I said, there's there's quite a few things inaccurate on here. In two, they opened that account in 2017. In 2017, there's four or five months of missing information. There, in those missing information, there's no balance, there's no 
past, they're saying that it's 30 days late, but they're not even reporting the past due balance that was for that month. Inaccurate, incomplete information, right? So you definitely want to look at that because most times they're going to say like, this is the balance in the upper part of the report, the body of it, they're going to say it's where the date it was open, last activity. Usually that stuff is accurate. But where most of the inaccuracies happen, mark my word, do your research, is in the, in the payment history. So when you get that full year credit, that seven year credit report, right, you start going down and looking at every month you're going to start seeing, man, they didn't, they didn't report this month. You're going to look up, they didn't report that it was past due, but they said it was 30 days. How much was I past due in that month for 30 days? What was the balance in that month for 30 days? That is missing. So that's why you need to get a full credit report. You want something that gives all the information, not bits and pieces of your credit report that the original creditor gets the whole thing. And that's why some people get confused sometimes why they got denied to get a partial credit report, but the original creditor probably went back further than what the, the partial credit reports did. So first thing, look at that, get your annual credit report, look at your seven year payment history and make sure all that information is accurate. Uh, uh, I always said, look to see if the report, the accurate account was settled. So if you settled the account, right, there's a zero balance. They're no longer reporting it. And you're like, man, how do I get this off? I'm, again, you're going to go to that seven year payment history and you're going to start from the date. When you look at the body and it says this account was open in July of 2017, you're going to go all the way down to July of 2017. So they probably didn't first report it till August of 2017 when they first hit your credit report. And you're going to look and say, did they report, okay, say it was okay, 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 the next year, right? In 2018, in August, you went delinquent, 30 days. And from that point, you never paid it. So that 30 days, did they report a past due balance? What was the balance at that time? And then the next month, you went 60 days. What was your past due on that account? What was the balance on that account? It accumulated interest. So what was the accurate balance on that account? You didn't pay the next month. It's 90 days. So now, what was the past due balance? So say your past due balance was $100. It should go 100, 200, 300. Your balance should have went up whatever the interest charge was plus that. So you, you see what I'm saying? So that's the accuracy of your credit report. And then the fourth month, you made a payment. Maybe you made a payment and you brought it down to 30 days, right? Now, what was the past due balance? What was the actual balance? That's why you need to look at your full credit report and understand that information. So now when you're disputing it, you can be detailed about the dispute letter and what you actually are disputing to try to get that charge off removed, right? That's the power of it. I am disputing in July of 2018 uh, and August and September, there was, they were reporting it was late but they did not report that there was a past due balance. So in that case, these accounts were current. The two year payment history is wrong, right? Please verify this information. And if this is inaccurate, please delete this account. Like you just gotta put the letter together, right? Now, let's continue on. If you, a lot of times, if you settle for less than the amount, you should have received a 1099C if it's over $600. So say you had a $2,000 a charge off. You paid them $1,000, which left a balance of $1,000. You should have received a 1099C for that $1,000. Anything over $600, you should be receiving a 1099C. 
Why? Why, Larry? Why do we need to get a 1099-C? Because they still needed to report that $1,000 that was lost. So you should have got a 1099-C. The math don't add up. If you settled and did not get a 1099-C, there it, the creditor is in violation. Are they doing some sneaky stuff they ain't supposed to be doing? Now, you don't owe them any money because you already settled the account. So now you can take them to court. I'm not a lawyer, but I would take them to court if I didn't get a 1099-C and challenge why did I not get what was what's going on with the accounting of this account that I didn't receive that. Now, you could check with the IRS, ask them for a tax transcript. We're going to talk it. You could talk to the, send a letter to the creditor why I didn't receive a 1099-C. Don't avoid those 1099-Cs. A lot of time, that is your out, but y'all move. Don't do change of address. You're trying to avoid the same things that you're going to need at some point to get the to get the charge off removed. The 1099-C is going to be your out to help you get it removed. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, right? So you need to get that. They wrote it off. They didn't get the whole money. They had to, they had to submit the loss to the IRS. And it, to submit that loss, they had to submit a 1099-C so they can get credit for the money that they lost from the IRS. That's the glory about being in business, right? You can write off certain things and get a credit for it on your taxes, right? So that is one of the main reasons you need to be making sure you get that 1099-C. Now you may ask, well, Larry, I'm going to get a 1099-C, but what I'm going to do with it? First of all, we're going to talk about some powerful things. We're going to talk about how does the court view that 1099-C? I preach this all the time. There are courts, and we're gonna. Go, I'm gonna read some stuff to you off court cases that tell you that there are courts out there that say that a creditor who has submitted a 1099-C, who have got credit from the IRS for the loss that they have, it is unfair for you to continue to report this charge off on the consumer's credit report. Now think of this, you settled this account, you got paid, they got some money, you had to get the 1099-C and submit that to your taxes that increased your tax liability, right? And then the creditors submitted it and got a credit from the IRS and then they still wanna try to punish you on your, your uh, credit report. So a lot of courts are saying, that's a lot, right? You're, you're doing too much, creditor. You're doing too much. You got, you, you settled the account. You got some money. You got a credit from the tax IRS. That is unfair to the creditor that you're going to continue to report that charge off for seven years, right? Right? So there are court cases that said, uh, and I'm going to read one to you. It said, uh, oh, well, first, let me go back. What should you do? You should write a letter to the creditor. Requesting the 1099-C, why I am I am sending you a letter because I had settled this account and there was still a remaining balance that I should have received a 1099-C for. Now, mind you, if you settled that account, they pretty much got the updated information. Why didn't I? Why have I not received that 1099-C that for the remaining balance owed? Right. There was a discrepancy. It could have been a discrepancy in the amount that I actually owed. Why did I not receive that? It was a requirement for you, for I, for me, the consumer, to get that 1099-C. Right? And in request, listen, because you're going to use the courts because I settled the account. You issued a 1099-C to the IRS. You received the tax credit, Right? and you're still trying to report this on my credit report, it is unfair and there are some court cases that have, have uh, uh, rendered in favor of the consumer that it is unfair for you as a creditor. You receive the settlement, 
you got a credit from the IRS and you're still trying to report this uh, charge off on my credit report, put the creditor to the test. A lot of times, once it's settled, it's a lot easier to get the charge off removed off your credit report. And that's one of the things that you definitely want to do. That's how I attack it, right? So you write a letter. It says, unlike the cases cited above, some courts have pursued that it is inequitable, meaning unfair, to allow a creditor to be lately enforce the alleged debt after it received a tax credit for the charge-off. There were court cases. If you want to know about those court cases, shoot me a message, right? I will get the court cases to you, right? And there are a number of court uh, cases that have been rendered in that form. So please, please look at the different strategies to get the charge-offs removed. Now, uh, Metro 2 always says that original charge-off, the original charge-off to the loss, how much you want to make sure what was the amount was lost. You also want to look at the delinquencies on the account. Make sure they're accurate. Make sure all that information, charge-offs, what the past due balance was, what the balance was at that month. You need to own what is it? Is it listed right on your credit report? Was the open date right? If you did settle the account and the next month, did they actually report on the account? They, If you settled the account in July of 2018, August of 2018, there should have been zero reporting. So in a two-year payment history, it should be blank. It shouldn't be a check. It shouldn't be a CO. It shouldn't be 30 days late, 60 days. It should be blank. If any reporting has been done, that's inaccurate. Actually, you could take them to court for that inaccurate reporting, right? So look at all that about your charge off. It is very difficult. Again, if you want to keep sending letters to the credit bureaus because you see some inaccurate information and you owe the creditor $5,000 and you can't get it removed, that's why you can't. The creditor is like, I could care less if I'm reporting it inaccurate. You owe me $5,000 and I want my money and I'm going to keep it on there, right? So take me to court. But once they settle this no more, they can't take you to court. They can't do nothing else. They agreed to the amount. The other thing, listen, the other thing about the charge off is, listen, it goes against your debt to income ratio. If you have five charge offs and all of them are $5,000, that's $25,000 going against your debt to income ratio. So when you try to apply for credit, they are calculating that negative debt against you, which raises your debt to income ratio, which caused them to say, if we gave them a loan and they got this, not only are they not paying this, they're too high up in their debt to income ratio because we're expecting them to pay that, right? So it would make them difficult to pay us back. So it doesn't improve your score. Don't let anybody tell you on FICO that it doesn't improve your score. Yes. One, because they're no longer reporting on it. Two, because the past due balance that they was reporting goes to zero. Third, your balance goes to zero. It goes, it, now it's a, it's a reduction of your debt to income ratio because you don't owe that money anymore. Think about it. Let's, let's put it in context, right? So yes, your score is going to go up. Yes, it's still to be a negative indicator on your credit report. But I've known, I know people and talk to people that have 700 credit scores with charge-offs that are old, that are paid. And they got a 700, 715, 720 with a charge-off. But if you don't understand and quit letting people feed you the stuff that you want to hear and try to get with people to just give you the truth about it. So you can move your credit report. It is not about your score. That's why you never see me put, I can raise your score 100 points. 
It's about your credit profile. When somebody look at your credit report, what does your credit report look like? Sometimes y'all, if y'all be honest with yourself and look at your own credit report, you wouldn't even borrow, you wouldn't even give money to yourself. So think about that. Be honest, and you will move a lot faster in improving your credit. So I've seen people in 12 months go from five to seven because they handle the stuff they need to do. 200 points and getting the things that they want to get. But I know people that's been struggling. I talk about, man, I've been working on my credit for two years and it's still like a 630. And then when I look at that credit report and I break it, say, you're the only person that broke it down to me like that. I got it. I'm on it now. And then come back and say, man, my score in the last three months went up 75 points. Because they did what I told them to do. Because I understand how FICO works. A lot of people don't understand it. They think they try to tell you that, but they don't. But anyway, I don't want to make this video too long. I appreciate y'all. Please like and subscribe to the channel. If you got any questions about uh, charge-offs, you know the deal. Shoot me an email. Uh, shoot me a message. Uh, I try to get to everybody. I do have a master dispute package. Now, if you go to my website and buy the master dispute package, when you purchase it, it's going to give you a link to download it. You have to download the link. I think I have it set for at least 90 days. You have to download the link. But if there is an issue, because I'm an honest business, business guy, email me. I will send you the package. I will send it to you. And in every one of my emails that I send out, it has my email address, my business name, and my phone number. So who else is doing that? And I give out free credit analysis. Leave a comment. Ask somebody. He give out free credit? Yes. I don't even charge for it. Because I want to see people improve. I'm blessed. So I want to see that. So, and... And some people, they just, hey, here go a tip. I appreciate you taking the time out. Some people don't. It don't really make a difference to me. But I know at the end of the day, I help them. If you're looking for authorized user cards, shoot me an email. I can tell you what I can do. So if that, this channel is keeping it real with you. Maybe I should change the name to keeping it real with Larry. La La Larry. Mike Larry or whatever. You're just joking. But... Hey, it's all about keeping it real with y'all. But I appreciate y'all. Like, subscribe, share to the channel. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. If you got any more questions, check out my master dispute package. All this information, there's tons of information is in there. And even if you purchase it, you got access to me. You got the ability to talk to me, ask me questions, all that stuff, and I can walk you through it. If you want me to work on your credit, shoot me an email. Sit down. I'm not expensive. I'm not like all these people charge you a whole bunch of money. Matter of fact, when I work on people, I'm going to send, I don't send out letters. I send you the letters. You send them out so you can educate yourself for one, know what kind of letters and know, be transparent that what you're getting, what you're sending off and all that. We still work together. We're a team. My, my position is to guide you, right? But I want you to, I want you to educate yourself along the way. That's what a real credit repair person. And you just to improve your score, it's not just removing negative. You have to put positive stuff on there to change the behavior on it to increase your score. So it's a combination of removing negative and adding positive and adding the right positive information on your credit report. And you got to understand that to move your credit report. It is a game of chess. So you got to think before you do. You got to have move. You got to have three moves ahead. That's how you play chess. You got to think three moves ahead. So with your credit report, you should be doing that. You should know what your next step, the next three steps before you even got to them. But I appreciate y'all. I'm rambling. I need to get off here. Uh, coming back with another video in a minute. I need to get these videos out to y'all, but I appreciate y'all. Like, subscribe, and share. If you got any questions, shoot me an email. 
and I'm out. Thank you.